It seems like it's been 40 weeks since you got 40 winks. Your back pain, unbearable. Tossing, turning, trying to find that pain-free position. And that's the moment you realize you can't spend another waking moment putting off treatment. The Joint and Spine Center is Cincinnati's leading destination for spine care with a ton of surgical and non-surgical treatments for back pain. So when a moment has the power to change the rest of your life, go to the one place with the power to change it for the better, the Christ Hospital Health Network. This changes everything. The Pound This Podcast is brought to you by the Christ Hospital Health Network. This is the Pound This Podcast, episode 699, Shay's Weight Loss Journey, important episode. I want to lose weight, but I don't know how to get started. What should I meal prep every week? How do I get those sweet booty gains? Inspiration for your healthy lifestyle. The Pound This Podcast with Amanda Valentine. Thank you so much for listening to The Pound This Podcast. I am Amanda Valentine, joined again by Shay. What up, girl? What's up? (laughs) So I I know we're going to kind of go into a a deep discussion today, and I just kind of want to preface this by everyone listening kind of keep something in their mind um, because I mean the past couple of years and just life sometimes we hop on the struggle bus in Shay slash Shannon um, I, I know that you kind of want to talk about some of the places that you've bon- been on or you know what you've been going through for a while here so everyone listening just kind of put a phrase into your mind or something that whenever you're struggling something that helps you get through it, words of wisdom, encouragement, or, you know, sort of a, you know, just like a motivational quote or something that helps you. And I want to keep that in mind, because I want to discuss that as we go through this conversation. Um, But with that being said, um, I know, uh, Shannon, that you specifically asked uh, if if we wanted to cover this topic and and what's going on with you in this episode. And, And as we've kind of discussed with you being a guest on this podcast of, you know, you can share whatever you like, you don't have to share anything. And so that, you know, if you can be here, if you want, you don't have to be here if you want. And to say that you've been just, I am so incredibly grateful and thankful for you being on this podcast and being on as much as me with you are in your vulnerability and sharing your journey, and how I think that not only impacts me, and, you know, I appreciate that so much and makes me just love you as a human. But how I think that people listen to this podcast just appreciate our conversation and the realness and the vulnerability that we both have discussing what a journey is like of, you know, health, fitness, weight loss, um, trying to be, uh, you know, the best version of ourselves that we can. And by going through that, it's the realistic ups and downs and not this linear like, hooray, all my life's problems are solved. <laughs> yeah. And so um, <laughs> I, I, you know, I guess I'll just kind of let you take it from there. Um, and just again, you know, that you are sharing what what parts of your journey that that you feel comfortable with. And, and I don't ever want you to feel pressured that you need to share anything that that you don't want to or doesn't feel safe or comfortable. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I think that one of the biggest reasons I want to kind of share how I've been struggling is because there's this idea that it is like a linear journey. Like you lose the weight and you just kind of have everything figured out and that's not accurate at all. Um, and I think that I even have people that look at me that way that like I have shit figured out and I most of the time don't. Um, so anyway, so I've gained like over the past several months, probably it's like around 15 pounds. Um, and I like feel so much like shame and embarrassment around that, that like sharing this is really helpful to me because I've just been sitting in that to the point that like, I hadn't even told you or my therapist because it's like so embarrassing for me to be like, Oh yeah, I lost 90 pounds and now I've gained 15 pounds. It fucking sucks. So, um, but I feel like if I'm not honest about it, that people continue to like, look at people who've lost weight as if it's like, oh, you just figure it out and it's fine. And that's not accurate at all. There are times like it did feel really easy for a while and now it doesn't. Um, So now I got to figure out a new way to kind of do things. So. And I just want to say, I don't, I mean, as I'm going through a similar struggle of, I, you know, I gained weight um, also last year in, in 2020 and it just makes you feel like, especially when you're, 
having conversations about yeah. this all the time and thinking of like, then you feel like you're a liar and you feel like you're mm. a fraud and you feel like you're having discussions about that sort of thing. And you're like, but at the same time, I'm not loving myself the way that I say that I am and I'm gaining weight. And but that it's, it's, I don't know. It's just one of those things that I think that's so much in your own head. And I think everybody can relate to this, that every, everybody, especially your support system and around you, doesn't even notice. I, I couldn't, I mean, I see you all the time and I, I didn't, couldn't have told, said been like, oh my God, she gained weight. And even if you right. did, that's not anything that I even look at. It's, it's, it's something that that's not even on my radar, even though we discuss weight loss often. Yeah. And that how you just brutalize your own self and how you're just so mean to yourself and tell yourself that you're a failure and everything else. And it's just kind of like, and then when you hear it, you're like, or you hear someone else say it and you're like 15 yeah. pounds, girl, that ain't no thing. You know what I mean? Of just kind of like, oh my uh -huh. God, considering the global pandemic we're still in on top of yeah. everyday life struggles. It's like, if that's what you had to do to survive through this, like that's, that's amazing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Of like, wow, that's, that you know, it could be a, a whole lot worse. And so it's, but I, I understand how, how hard and how mean you are to yourself and how, especially after, you know, then I think that you get compliments and accolade, accolades on, you know, for, for doing healthy things for yourself. And then when you aren't continuously doing that, ever, I think that anybody who loves you and supports you doesn't see that as a detriment at all or sees that even as a setback. They see it as just part of the journey. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. don't know if that's, that's helpful or not, but I don't know. I, I just... I just feel that so much and I know that, that you've been, been struggling and I've felt that so much too. And it's just kind of like, oh yeah, I don't, I mean, what have your, has your therapist any given you any like good advice of kind of getting you in a better headspace? Um, well, yeah, like, I mean, last week, I mean, I cried a whole lot last week in therapy and I mean, cause I've, I've only gained 15 pounds, but I feel huge. Like, yeah. I literally feel like I'm ginormous all of a sudden. And like my therapist last last week was like, she had me look at the door in the room and it was like, compared to this door, how big do you think you are? And I I told her that I, I in my mind, am as big as that door. And she made me stand in front of the door so that she could show me legitimately how wide I am. And it's just so fucked up that like I in my head am as wide as a freaking door and I wasn't even half the size of the door yeah. like legitimately so <clears throat> it's just kind of like how like warped my sense of my body is just from gaining you know this amount of weight um but her and I like she told me right now she doesn't even want me to like focus on like, okay, what am I going to do next? Because she doesn't want me to go into some disordered type of thing. Um, but when I started this, it was all out of like self-love. It wasn't even like, when I started this, it, I wasn't even like, oh yeah, I'm going to lose a bunch of weight. It was like, I just got to freaking love myself and care for myself better. So that's what her and I are going to work on. It's kind of like going back to the basics of how do I love me because I'm not doing that right now. Um, and another thing that her and I work on a lot together is I I have an easier time loving my younger self than I do me now. So it's helpful for me to like I have a picture of me as a little girl that I can like look at and think about how would I want to treat her versus how would I treat me. Um, and I don't know if that makes sense to other people, but it's it's a little easier to be like, OK, I want to care for this little girl rather than, you know, thinking it's, it's harder to think about caring for me. And I know that isn't great, but it's the reality. Yeah, so. no, I think that's great advice um, because yeah. we are the same person and I try to do those things too. Um, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, trying to have, I, you know, I've had a discussion recently of just, you know, really trying to love myself at every size and not yeah. to, and, and I don't, and I'm not at a point now where I look at a picture of me, um, older photos of me. And I don't think I ever self shame in, in that, if, but just, 
I don't, just, you know, just a different sort of like, I love that person too. That's still me. That's the same thing with like little you of just like, wow, if you could even tell them now that where you're at, even though you're struggling, they would be like, oh my God, that's so awesome. You know? Yeah. And that's so important because it's it's the same person. And I I love that you're just saying that this is a place from self-love. And I think that the lesson I learned from also gaining some weight last year and thinking that was, you know, especially for me of like, I I left my longtime radio career to start a job in health and fitness and then gaining weight and being like, Oh my God, I had this under control until like, this is the time where I actually like really need this the most. And you know, I don't know, COVID was coming and everything else in life. But I think for me, where I'm at now is what I, I really hope that, is going to be something similar for you of like from gaining that weight back. It's like, okay, we're, we're not focused on the weight now we're focused on Mm -hmm. just loving me and feeling good in my own body at whatever size that is. And maybe gaining 15 pounds is my happy size. And it doesn't have to be 15 pounds less of me in order for me to feel happy or gratitude and to just really love that body and focus on being strong and focus on all the other things that we can say out loud and intellectually, it makes sense. But still, yeah. somehow emotionally, you're still so attached to your size and the weight and the size clothes and all that stuff of like, I think that you just have to go through this brutalized journey to finally get to a place. You know, for some people, the journey's different than others, obviously, to be like, God, that I just got to let that go. I just, I just want to love me. And if I gain another 50 pounds, that's fine. As long as I'm healthy and I feel good, in, you know, physically and mentally, that's what's important. And I don't know, that's just kind of, I feel like struggling and feeling that the same way you feel by gaining weight, I think helped me unlock really kind of loving my body um, at, at multiple sizes more, um, yeah. you know, but I'm several months, you know, God, I mean, almost a year of kind of really sorting through that and dude, it's hard. It's so hard. It is hard. (laughs) It's really hard. (laughs) Yeah. And it's just so like, I don't know, it's all just such a mind game. So, cause like you said, it's like intellectually, I know that like, you know, I'm not any less of a person or I'm not worth any less because I've gained weight. And like, like you said, you didn't even notice, but it's like all the things in my mind. Like I assume that everyone that sees me right now is like, Oh shit, Shannon's getting big. And then it's like, you, you didn't even notice. So it's just like all those freaking mind games that I have to quit playing. Yeah. And that that's hard. It's a practice. It's a process. And that, I I mean, I'm just, so freaking grateful that you wanted to have this conversation um, Mm -hmm. because, you know, this is, you know, I think this is, it's an important conversation when you're not seeing these conversations a ton, when you're talking about a weight loss journey, you're seeing a before and after picture, you're seeing all these other things, um, you know, Mm -hmm. just in general, broad sweep statement, not every, some people are share a lot more than others, Yeah, but it's like when you see those sorts of things, then you just write this own narrative in your mind of, oh, that's so easy for them. And this is where they are now. And their struggles must be over. And like, no, like it's, I mean, honestly, if somebody's going to be brutally honest with you, like you are being, then it's like, you know, this is still like, you know, you're, you're still dealing with, with demons and you're still Mm -hmm. dealing with how to, to love yourself. And it's, you know, it, it, it's, I think it's those down moments that where you really kind of learn to, some hard lessons. Um, yeah. and that's where I'm just kind of like, you know, I, I, I just, I don't know. I, I just feel for you so much cause I know exactly the spot you're in, but at the same time, yeah. I'm like, Oh my God, like, don't worry. There's, there's light at the end of the tunnel. And it's, and I just know that everyone listening to this probably 1000% resonates with exactly how you're feeling exactly what you're going through and it is helpful to hear that Mm -hmm. and and I don't feel like anybody or anybody that is supportive in in your real life or in a podcast or social media life will be like 
Oh my God, she gained weight. Did you see that Shannon gained weight? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's, and if somebody is, yeah. that person is trash and get rid of them. But right. I just feel yeah. like that in our own heads, we just feel like that's what's happening. And in reality, like it's just the opposite. Well, and in reality, I don't want anyone in my life who's going to be an asshole about me, you know, struggling and gaining weight. So it's just like, again, it's like, I don't need that type of person in my life, but I just assume that everyone around me is that way. So it's, it's crazy. But yeah, I was talking to my mom about how I was struggling with whether or not to like share this kind of stuff or just to share this on the podcast. And she was like, I can tell you as someone who struggles with, you know, weight myself, that it's very helpful to have someone share that it's not, you know, it's not like you just have it figured out. So yeah. And yeah. I, I, I 100% agree that um, even though I'm sure in the moment to ourselves and, and probably for you of just you feel like it's a failure when, when really it's I think mm-hmm. it's just a huge lesson and it's a gift yeah. to be like, you know, that's it's how this this goes. And this is or what am I learning from this? And I don't know. It's just, you know, I feel like I've been, you know punched in the gut a lot by life and it's yeah. like when that happens I've been learning to try to take those moments and be like okay but what's the lesson in this what can I take from this instead of just you know just staying beat down from it and it's it's hard because once you get knocked down so many damn times you're like oh my god can can this stop now I, I've learned yeah. enough <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, I feel good yeah. I'm good <laughs> It's enough slices. Good. Quit knocking me down. Good God. <laughs> but, but I mean, it's it's true. And that I feel like any, any time that something that has really resonated with me it is somebody sharing a time that they struggled. Um, mm-hmm. And even in just like not sort of weight loss things, like a thing that um, I found one of my best examples was when I went to a podcast conference in 2019 and I saw a panel, and it was a panel of women. One one woman worked for TED Talk, um, TED Talk podcast, another one for NPR, and I forgot where the other woman worked. But they went up and shared their failures of like, especially like NPR with their podcast of like, we yeah. tried this, it didn't work. We tried this, it didn't work. We tried this, it didn't work. And it was stuff that I was trying too, that I'm like, oh, I just must not be doing this correctly. And they're like, no, they have this massive platform And they couldn't figure out how to work it either. And they were just like, you know, trial, error, trial, error over and over and over again until they found something that worked and then shared through all of those struggles, finally finding a solution through the, you know, the the failures of it. And that was the most incredible, helpful thing I took out of that one out of that entire conference. And just in life in general, for me to be like, that was so helpful for me. It made me feel seen. It made me feel better about myself that I'm like... Mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm not the only one struggling with this exact same thing. And to be like, okay, well, yeah, you just got to keep on trying and figuring it out. And I'm like, wow, really kind of sharing the struggles and the failures gave me, helped me more than sitting in panels of everybody just sharing successes. And that's such yeah. a huge takeaway for me of like, you feel so vulnerable and open for attack and it's so scary and shameful mm-hmm to share these things that you view as failures when honestly, like that is like the biggest wins to share those things. Um, I mean, even just like, look at, you know, what is happening in the Olympics with Simone Biles of like, yeah, I mean, her stepping down to me, like, I got to take care of me, man. Like I'm sure in her head and some place, it probably feels like some level of failure. And she probably had to oh, yeah. turn that off and be like, no, it's not. This is strong. This is strength. This is what winning looks like is taking care of me and my mental health. And so I'm sure yeah. there's plenty of attacks from uh, all over the place on her. Oh yeah. And she has to work through that and stand in and look, I mean, every post that I saw this week on Instagram and everywhere else about her is like, you go, girl. Hell yeah. Take care of your mental health. Thank you for saying this out loud. Yeah. This is better than any damn gold medal. And it's yeah. true. And that probably was so freaking scary for her to mm-hmm. do that. But honestly, it helped an immense amount of people more than winning a gold medal does. Yeah. Yeah. And just having everyone say like, oh, she's human. Like we just like idolize people and think that they're you know, they've got everything together and we're all just human. Mm-hmm. Just 
just trying to freaking make it. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. But So what I wanted to, you know, when I kind of said it at the beginning of, you know, sharing a, you know, a, a thought that helps you when, when you're struggling. So that one was one for me is kind of that, that panel. Also, one of my favorite quotes is um, a Frederick Douglass quote which is, um, if there is no struggle, there is no progress. And mm. that's helpful for me of like, when you're having this time and you're, you know, you're struggling, I've just kind of like, this is where the growth is. This is where the progress is. This is, I'm feeling alive and I'm feeling human and I, and I'm going through it. And, and this is going to create some amazing changes for me and kind of what, and I, I didn't tell you that I, I'm doing this, but what, what I would like, unless you say no, you can tell me no, if this is too much. Oh God. <laughs> what, what I would like people listening to this podcast to do, just because I know that just from my feedback that I get, that I think you are so incredibly loved as a guest on this podcast. If somebody would want to give you words of encouragement, I would really love it if somebody would record a voice memo and send it to me Aww. so you can hear it. Um, you can email me Amanda at Amanda Valentine bites.com. Um, if you just wanted to record words of encouragement, uh, you know, a, a phrase that helps you whenever you're struggling, or you just want to tell Shay slash Shannon <laughs> that, you know, you just what, however you want to express anything. Um, if you could send me a voice memo with your, with your phone and email that to me so I could, I could play these on this podcast. And I also got a PO box. If anybody wants to send anything physically tactile or anything that, uh, has words of encouragement or anything like that. And I'll put that in the show notes, which I'm actually pretty hyped to have a PO box. I don't know. Like that's oh nerdy, God, but I thought it was that's like, exciting. I thought it was cool. No, I'm just going to send you stuff for fun. <laughs> I went there and I'm like, I had to choose what size and I don't know what I was doing. And I took like a picture of my P.O. box. I'm like, look, I got a oh, P.O. box. <laughs> no, people are going to send you weird shit. I hope so. I hope ah, so. <laughs> I'm going to start sending you weird stuff with no name on it. Even though you know where I live. You could just I drop know, it off on my porch. You have a P.O. box. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I just know how that stuff is, is, is so helpful, especially in a virtual world where I know some people, mm. you know, it's sending letters or cards or anything of words of encouragement, I think kind of physically having those things helps. Um, so I, I thought that, you know, and I thought that I could use a PO box for multiple things, but if somebody wanted to do that, I'll put that in the show notes or Amanda at Amanda Valentine bites.com send um, just some words of encouragement in general or specifically to Shay. Um, I would just really love to share that because I think that's important to know. I mean, you know, you're on here being vulnerable in, in sharing deep parts of your life and you don't have to, this isn't your podcast. Right. <laughs> and, yeah. um, I, I just think that, I think that you're making a giant impact for a lot of people, including myself. And, um, I hope that helps you, you know, just to kind of, to hear that, you know, you're very loved no matter how much you weigh or what your size is, or if you gained 200 pounds, then, you know, we're still going to, to love you and support you. And, and, um, I just, you know, I think that's, that's important to hear sometimes. Yeah. Thank you for yeah. saying that. Yeah, I do. Yeah. And yeah, I, I'm, I'm super proud of you because it, it's hard. It's, I mean, it is hard. And I had to like, I mean, it's, it's hard. I feel like I've done a lot of scary things the past like couple of weeks, just being vulnerable, but it's been, like I just keep so much shit inside that it starts to feel so heavy. And it's like the more that I've shared over the past week, like it's like I just feel lighter. <laughs> and it's like I was telling my therapist like last week, like I know it's not necessarily the weight, but everything feels so heavy. And then it's like I feel like I'm like feeling that 15 pounds times 100 because everything just feels so heavy. And then it's like the more that I've shared, the like the lighter that I freaking feel. So it's like that's why sharing is so important for me because I just hold so much shame in the things that I don't share. So, yeah, um, I yeah, I totally feel that, too. Um, yeah, that that's why I think it's so important to ask for help. And sometimes asking for help yeah. is just having somebody to be like, can you can you please listen to me? I just I just need yes. someone to listen and not all of us have that a person in our life that we can do that to, which is 
you know, one of the reasons I created this podcast where if you, yeah. if you need somebody that will to just listen or ask a question to, or, or lend an ear to, I, you know, I'm, I'm happy to, to be that person to whatever level I can or to point somebody in the direction to. And, and so I think that just, yeah, whether it's your friend or coworker or therapist or coach or whatever it is of just somebody to be like, I think just letting it out there feels yeah. so freeing. And I know that when I did that on this podcast, it felt, uh, it felt awesome. Like, well, and when the moment then I did it without like, you know, bawling my eyes out. So shout out <laughs> that you didn't cry because God, I can't get through I've that. I've done so much crying <laughs> that I'm just like, okay. <laughs> yeah. But it does. It feels like it just feels, yeah, you just feel lighter. And mm -hmm. even with personal not anything to do with weight loss, but, um, you know, yeah. some of the, the trauma and stuff that I've been through that I yeah. held on to that so, so tight and didn't tell anybody for a very long time. And now I'm telling more and more people and it's, yeah. it's freeing because it's not as yeah. heavy anymore. It's not as scary. It's just kind of like, that's just part of you and who you are. And yeah. it's not this you know, and even if like you just tell one person, then it feels like then they own this power of some sort too, of just yeah. kind of like, no, the more I share it and I let it go, it's like, this is, this is for me. And it, I don't know, it's, it's amazing how that does just make you feel physically lighter somehow. It does. Yeah. It's like, I just feel like I'm like walking around, you know, living my life a little bit lighter. So yeah, <laughs> which is good. Well, yeah. thank you for sharing. I appreciate yeah. it. And thanks for like letting me share. So yeah, dude. Well, yeah. I mean, obviously you're welcome here all yeah. the time. And um, yeah, I'm hoping people really kind of send you some really awesome words of encouragement. I love just hearing those kinds of quotes and motivational that's, things. That's what's going to make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to make me cry. <laughs> like I already you're know it. Be a mess. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, I mean, I'll be like, Oh my God. Do you have anything like that or those kind of affirmational sort of, I know that you're into affirmations and stuff or something that, that yeah. kind of is a, a key for you. Well, one of my favorite quotes is, um, it might, this might, might not be exact, but it's like without darkness, you can't see the stars. Oh. And that's one of my favorites. Cause it's like, I mean, dark times are always going to happen. So, yeah. um, yeah, that's one of them, but, um, yeah. And then, I mean, the affirmations are for myself are a huge thing that I have to start doing again. Um, cause those, I just, those help to silence the negativity that I hear in my head or the negative thoughts I have about myself. So yeah, but yeah, that stuff helps me too. That's why I have like oh, little, sure. little notes everywhere kind of saying those things. And this isn't even a quote, but something I think about, which I really love that without the darkness, you can't see the stars. I really love that one. But I kind yeah. of think of just like a yin yang of like, especially when I'm in a dark time of like, okay, well, with this darkness, also, there's the equal parts of lightness. So yeah. I'm going to experience that too. But I got to feel yeah. this sometimes in order to really appreciate the light. So it's kind of like I have to also embrace the darkness. So I can also embrace the brightness too. So it's like, right. I can't just you know, embrace one and not the other where they coexist. And that makes you, you know, pull you through a dark time of like knowing how great the highs can feel and how awesome life can really, really feel sometimes. Right. So it's like, yeah, it's dark right now, but it's not going to stay that way. No. Well, um, and honestly, when I think about some of the darkest points in my life, some of the best things happened after that. So even like, before I like went on this weight loss journey, I was in a super dark place. And then all these really incredible things happened to me after that. So I'm like, if I can just get through this shit, <laughs> like, I don't know what's on the other side, but chances are, it's going to be really cool. So it's just like, I got to hold on for that. Yeah. And that's, yeah. I feel the same way of just kind of, you know, I was in a really dark place end of 2020. I mean, then I was diagnosed, um, with depression and started antidepressants and even this year with getting a concussion, I mean, it sucks, but it didn't yeah. drag me down to this dark ass level where I was, um, the end of last year. And I did. And I, I asked multiple people for help and I've been working through it and really just trying to put myself in a mindset of, 
I'm, I'm loving my body. And by loving my body, I'm nourishing my body. I'm moving my body. I'm doing healthy things for myself. And it's not just because I need to be a smaller size or my body looks a certain way. And it just kind of feels like, yeah, I wouldn't have really, really dug in that hard to those sorts of things without being in such a dark place of like, I, it almost felt like I know I wasn't where I was like before I started my weight loss journey, which was a very dark place. But it also I had the same feeling of like, this isn't me. This isn't yeah. this isn't the life that that I want to live. This just doesn't feel like me. And well, yeah. like, so I need to love myself through this because that's I mean, that's the way out is to just mm-hmm. really embrace and, and love it and yeah, and, and trust the process that that lighter days are ahead. And also too, I mean, just even struggling in, in different areas of just like kind of career stuff where, you know, I'm I've made a huge life transition into a completely different industry and it's it is a learning curve and I'm trying to learn my best and how alluring going back to some old ways is like, ooh, man, that would just be so easy. Like I can do that mm-hmm. with my eyes closed. Like, mm. but I'm like, but am I growing through that? Am I becoming the the, the version of me I want to be through that? Through right. coasting, and I'm like, you know, that's why we made this decision. We're trying to, to right. grow and be our best selves, and kind of talk yourself through that. And I mean, I think that translates to so many things of like, oh, man, I could just motor that whole tub of cheese balls right now. That's, that sounds real comforting. But then like, but is it because on the other side of that, you're yeah. physically going to feel sick, like you're just yeah. going to feel like you're going to yak or you're going to yeah. poop your pants. And that is yeah. not the direction I want to move in. <laughs> no. And anytime I do that, I'm like, that food didn't even taste good. Yeah, it, it wasn't even good. worth it. Ah, uh, yeah, it makes me crazy. Yeah. But but, yeah, it's, but I think those sometimes I wonder, too, if like this kind of stuff happens as a reminder for like why that's not the life I want to live anymore. Definitely. Oh, I 1000 yeah. percent agree with that. It's nice to have it's yeah. a reality check. It is because I don't like I don't feel good when I binge and mentally or physically and all the food that I think is going to taste really great never freaking does. Yeah, it's it's something in my head that it it really isn't in reality it's just wanting to numb out it is all the time and and when I think about this past year like I mean for over a year I worked 40 hours a week with a mask on I was listening to people's political and emotional like thoughts all day every day Mm -hmm. and it was freaking exhausting and all I wanted to do when I got home every night was freaking numb out and that's you know it's not like I did that always but that was, you know, food is my freaking coping mechanism. So it was just a hard, it was hard when every night after work, all I wanted to do was shut my freaking brain off. And then I don't know, it's difficult. Yeah. Cause it works. It shuts your brain off, but then it fucks your brain up. Yeah. It shuts it off for like two minutes while a you're second. doing it. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. on the other side of it. And that's where it's too, hell. like, that's where I, it's so incredibly important to get help. Um, especially, you know, if you do have like a binge eating disorder and that, right. And everybody that I have had this discussion with since doing this podcast is like, well, you should have got a professional, (laughs) you know, like whenever you were dealing with this and it would, it would have made the process much easier, would have made a lot more sense, um, because I didn't relate it as that issue, um, when I was going through it initially, but now I, now I can see when, when I want to do that and, Right. And now it's sitting in like, what are the feelings around this? Why do right. why do I want to do this? Right. And you don't always do that either. And that's not to say that it's never going to happen again, because it probably right. will. But for yeah. me, the win is it's very limited now. Like, I mean, right. it's just, you know, I don't know if never will ever be a thing. Um, right. But not every damn night. <laughs> right. Well, and it's way like I'm way more self-aware of when I'm wanting to binge. Like I've I'm just so much more self-aware of like, OK, something's triggering me. Something is I'm wanting to numb out from something. What is causing me stress right now? What is upsetting me? Because that's what I need to work through. I don't need to numb it out. I likely need to feel it mm-hmm. and then let it go. Because half the time I'm just trying not to feel something when honestly, if I just feel whatever it is and let that go, then I'm fine. Yeah. So it's it's the self-awareness that is huge. 
Well, so, and just even um, this is a conversation I'm actually recording another podcast about today of just sometimes it's not easy for a lot of people to feel your body. And I feel uh, like yeah. that that's something that has been turning some light bulbs on for me as far as um, physical activity goes and exercise of how I have a hard time making that mind muscle connection sometimes where it's yeah. like, I really want to focus on feeling the muscle I'm training. And for some reason, my brain is like, nope, 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 zone out. Mm -hmm. And that's a trauma response. And I just yep. thought that that's, you know, and, and I mean, I'll let the expert go into this when I have this discussion. We had a little mini discussion um, last week before we got to kind of discuss the way that we're going to do this podcast. But it's like, wow, that really clicks for me of that sometimes just really feeling inside of my own body is a really scary place. And that's why when yeah. you have like for me anyway, and again, I'm not any sort of therapist or doctor that it just makes sense to me of like why I use food so much to numb out in yeah. the past, because it's like I'm feeling these feelings in my body. Ugh, I hate this. How do I numb out of this? And because yeah. I don't want to feel it. And I think that's, um, God, that is just something that is not discussed in this journey that probably a lot wow. of people struggle with that don't understand th that that's what's it is just like, oh, I just don't have any motivation or control over food. It was like, right. sometimes it is way deeper than that. And yeah. maybe feeling your own body is, is scary. And you're trying, that's the way that you found protection in it. And how do you sift through that? Damn, that ain't easy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, my therapist compares me binging to basically me disassociating. Yeah. So, um, and that's, you know, I'm sure there's a ton of people who do that, especially people who have experienced trauma. Um, that's, you know, that's part of coping. I'll so. do that with TikTok now too. I'll notice if I'm feeling, oh, yeah. feeling emotions bubbling up in me and I'm like, oh, well, let's just zone out and scroll through videos. So, yeah. I mean, it's just binging in another way. It's like, let me yep. sit here and go down a TikTok rabbit hole because I'd rather focus on this than to feel negative feelings. And, you know, I'll have to catch myself in that. And then it sucks to be like, no, let's feel this out. Let's just feel these gross ass feelings. And it, it, yeah, it blows. But at least on the other side of that, it feels lighter. Like it doesn't feel as it controlling does. than tapping out. But man, it's hard not to tap out. <laughs> I know. So many freaking feelings. Yeah. Yeah. But so many good TikToks. So many good TikToks. So many bad feelings. You know, <laughs> yeah. it's like TikTok over feelings every day. <laughs> yeah. But I've learned a lot yeah. about myself from because the algorithms I get on TikTok is a lot of like self-help stuff. And I'm like, oh, mine's oh, just I weird. Uh, I go in, in rhythms, but at the core, I get a lot of deeply insightful, um, you know, life things that that are helpful for me, but I, probably because that's the stuff that I, I like and favorite for myself because I'm like, oh, I want to remember this. I want to go find the YouTube video and listen to yeah. it, take a deeper dive into this. And so then I'll get the stupid stuff too. And right now there's just some hilarious commentary of the Olympics. So those yes, crack me up. it's so good. <laughs> It's so gold. It really just gives me so much joy. <laughs> yeah. oh All right. God. So just to, to reiterate, if you wanted to give um, Shannon some positive words or you wanted to just share uh, something that helps you when you're struggling, um, send me a voice memo, Amanda at AmandaValentineBites.com. Um, here, I'll just rattle through the P.O. box, even though I don't expect anybody to write this down. It is P.O. Box 112140 at 3336 Harrison Avenue, Cincinnati, Ohio, 45211. That I had, was beautiful. I'd have my receipt, so I would wow. forget. I think you should add that to the end of your podcast. Record it just like that. Where I, where I sound, I've done that before multiple times where I'm the, I'm the on hold voice. Thank you ah, for calling. No, <laughs> I want you to make my voicemail. <laughs> I can't, I can do that in my porn voice if you want. <laughs> Oh my God. Yes. Thanks you know, I'm not calling. doing any job searching. I've worked in the same place so long. It doesn't really matter who's calling me. So no, your voicemail soon. only matters when you're job hunting. Well, I mean, yeah, I don't even know what mine says. Probably mine just like, hi, this is Amanda. Says, Leave a message. Oh my God. Mine's like, you have reached 513. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Well, thank you so much for sharing 
I really appreciate it. And uh, I hope that I hope things feel a little bit lighter for you from, from sharing. Yeah, for sure. All right. Thanks, homie. All right. Bye, girl. For info on health coaching and more, go to amandavalentinebites.com.